Yeah, if I'm done at 8.15, we can be. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Conquest Call-In Show. Remember, we uh, will not be the last, but we definitely were the first to make this the voice for all of you college, U college football fans and USC college football fans to come in and talk Trojan football for at least an hour with us every Friday night, starting at 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern, every Friday. Uh, we thank you. You guys are the show. Make sure you do call in. Uh, it's caller-driven. We do have on the agenda tonight. We do want to talk about uh, the introduction of the defensive staff that happened. Uh, all the coaches went into detail about what's going on with the program, uh, about why they came to USC. Uh, a lot of the beat writers have some excellent questions for them. If you get a chance, go over and check out the video on the athletic site. Uh, it's definitely worth uh, a couple hours of your time. If you are again, if you're here on a Friday in February, you are a diehard. So. Uh, make sure you're checking that out uh, as, as much as you can. Matt, uh, it's been a crazy week. Uh, how are you? I've been sick, you guys. I've been literally just out of commission for almost a week. Uh, Matt's been knocking things down. How are you doing, Matt? Doing okay. Like I'm, I'm glad you're on the on the other side of uh, your illness, and glad that you got through it. So you know, I've been just holding down the fort this week. Yeah, it's a blessing to teach, but I'll tell you what, those kids are like petri dishes. So uh, I, I'm constantly being exposed. The good news is I'm getting probably uh, vaccinated to every bug there is out known to man. I've been sick about three times this year. Uh, hopefully my immune system can keep up with these kids. Guys, uh, let me go ahead and throw on the proper uh, show background for you so you do have the phone number. Go ahead and, and call us in. Uh, as always, you guys, the number 888 997 Four five nine three, eight 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 ninety nine. Riley, give us a call. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Is this the dream team? So basically, what was th there were seven guys they were looking at that they wanted to land, uh, Lynn and Riley, and they nailed four of the seven guys that they had identified as their dream candidates, and uh, that's that's where we stand. Uh, we we know that we got the big news most recently was uh, landing. Uh, Coach Eric Henderson, uh, formerly of the Rams. Then we got uh, Matt Entz from uh, North Dakota State, uh, head coach, multiple national championships, coach linebackers. Uh, we have Doug Belk, who is going to be, uh, has been announced that he's the secondary coach. He's the safeties and the cornerbacks coach. Remember that, uh, that Danton Lynn is a, a safeties coach by trade. So uh, all the guys got up and they they had uh, oh sorry and sorry and the retention of Coach uh, Sean Nua, and, and so you have this group of guys uh, that are coming here with Riley brought in to revamp this defense as we head into the Big Ten. The story and the narrative always been that you know this USC team and Coach Riley teams are all about offense. They're soft. Even before Riley got here, USC was being called soft, not physical. I remember there was a very famous game against Arizona State where the players were on the sideline yelling soft at the players as they were beating them. So that this was how uh, USC has kind of fallen because I grew up with nasty defenses, huge. USC was known for having monsters on defense. They would actually, there were rumors back in the day. My dad told me, I'm trying to remember, Radovich? I can't remember, who's, who's, who was rumored to have eaten glass, okay? I mean, so these are kind of rumors that go. But that's how nasty these defensive players were. And uh, to get to the point where ASU, of all teams, is calling the Trojan soft uh, was probably the nadir in USC football. We hit there in the middle of the Helton uh, last two years with Helton. And this is what Riley has done. So I'd ask you guys out there right now, give us a call. Tell us, has USC done enough on defense? I'm not going to talk about personnel as much right now. We're talking about the coaches that they brought in. Do you think these guys can get us to a top 30 defense? Which I think, I mean, I think the top 20 is not out of the question. I know... People start rolling their eyes, but I really do think with uh, Lynn's system, which he he talked about in, in quite detail, he talked about the fact that he likes to install it slowly, and also he likes to simplify it, keep things simple. But with defense, is a key here, especially in college, is you got to keep the concept simple so the kids can play fast. But at the same time, you need enough window dressing, enough things to fool the the officer, the officer coordinator and that quarterback there pre snap, so they don't know what you're doing. And it's a combination of both those things that you look at at USC. And Matt, it looks like we have our first caller. Good evening. Thank you so much for calling into the show. You're on with Matt and Tim. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
My name is Brian Jobbins, and I'm calling from the San Fernando Valley. Brian, right? I talked to you on uh, on X. Uh, nice, nice to finally hear you call in. Uh, and I know what you want to talk about. You want to talk about the defensive line. Why don't you go ahead and set up for Matt and myself, and then we'll fill in. All right, no worries, brother. Uh, honestly, like I'm, I'm looking at this uh, schedule, and I'm thinking, I mean, th- this, these coaches, and I'm looking at the scheme that they're going to be running a, it's like a hybrid four-two-five. Yeah. And I'm asking myself, traditionally, are we going to be able to stack up against the run? And then I look at our two defensive line coaches, and the answer to me is overwhelmingly yes. I, I just don't see how with these coaches that we don't have the ability to develop. My only concern is not on the defensive side of the ball. Because I, I think our defense is going to stack up just fine against these mediocre offenses that we're going to see next year, with the exception of LSU and possibly Notre Dame. But how are we going to look on our offensive line? Well, you're we also leaving the Big Ten, which is... You're also leaving out one piece, though. Um, you, you also left out Michigan. Well, I know they're a shell of a team. They still have it. At this point, they still have a pretty damn good defensive line. So don't forget about Michigan as well. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. Uh, they're, they're, they're often, Michigan's offensive line is looking like it's still going to be very, very, very stout. Very stout. But they are also having a bunch of unproven players stepping in there's attrition when you win a national championship i i we don't know what they are you know it it would be it would be foolhardy of me to think that i could possibly know what michigan is right now i just want to hear what you guys have because i'm drinking the kool-aid when it comes to the staff i i honestly believe that we will be a top 25 top 30 easy defense and i i think we'll be better even with our current players and the, the guys we got coming in with this staff I want to know what you guys think about our offensive line. Oh, well. I'll let Matt go first because you think you're drinking Kool-Aid. I've been guzzling the Kool-Aid from that 2022 class that came in. Um, sorry, 2023 oh, yeah. class. Peter. Ooh. I, you know, I, and I'm looking – well, I mean, even before that, you know, we talk about Paige, Talele, Banuelos, Noah, and uh, Tobias Raymond. The, those guys – yeah, and then you, and you're adding now, you're adding Sandamella, Trader, Sina – uh taga and i'm forgetting one tanu right Is that right did i leave anyone out yeah yeah so so i mean yeah, th- there's yeah. there's I a mean, lot there and good players but and, and you listen i think mason mercy murphy you know he could turn the corner uh emmanuel pregnant people forget he was only a true sophomore someone correct me in the chat if i'm wrong on that one as well uh and then jonah monheim's coming back that was that was that was the big news is when monheim came back he could play anywhere along the line uh gino quinones is going to be coming in uh, back from being injured, so that's another piece you're adding to the, the the puzzle. So I mean, I've been banging this drum. Matt's listen. Matt is going to be there, you know, with a fine tooth comb because I, I I've assured him that our offensive line is going to be a bunch of nasty maulers, and and they are. They really. I mean, watch Michael Banuelos and watch, watch his film. Playing center though. Uh, that's going to be the question that that we're going to. You know, I know that. I know that. Um, uh, uh, Quinones could possibly play center. I don't know who's going to be there though. That, that's a really good question. You you have you you have guys. There's multiple guys. Who, who else could play center? Matt, Matt, help me out. I know that Michael Banuelos could play center. Um, but you don't want you don't want to. Have uh, a let me. Let's look at spring ball and see where we are. Like right now, like <laughs> there, I don't think there's too much of a point. Oh, man, let's in, get excited you know, now. Come on, hop on the train with us. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, spring ball will spring ball will reveal a lot. But to the to the caller's point, I'm I'm Brian, right? I'm right with you. I am exactly where you are after you know this media availability for the defensive coaches. Like, oh, swoon, you know, like how could you not fall in love with these defensive coaches? And and if we're gonna talk about Kool Aid, like I've I've had three or four gallons of Kool-Aid for this defensive staff. Like I'm a hundred percent sold. You cannot convince me that this defensive staff isn't going to do an absolutely outstanding job. And people will say top 30, top 20. I, like, I don't focus on that too much. Just, you know, are we going to have a good, competent, tough defense? 
Uh, you know, is that is that the basic question? And yes, yes. Like we, they, they, the defensive staff hit all the right notes. So that leaves the question mark on this staff and regular viewers of this show, also of our Monday show with Mark Rogers here at the Boys of College Football. You should know by now, Josh Henson, prove it here. Like you, you need to come through. You need to get her done. And the other thing about Josh Henson, the big reminder here is that if USC's offensive line proves to be soft and inadequate for a second straight season, that amplifies the pressure on Benny Wiley and the job that he's doing at strength coach. So in many ways, it's both Henson and Wiley. Because if USC's soft on the offensive line, it tells you, tells me anyway, that the, the issues with USC being soft in 2023 weren't just an Alex Grinch problem, weren't just a, a matter of Alex Grinch emphasizing finesse, speed concepts on defense. No, it was also something that was going on up front on the offensive side of the ball. But if USC's offensive line is right, and if Tim Prangley's view that these young offensive linemen are going to be big uglies, they're going to be nasty, they are going to be warriors, they're going to be road graders, if that comes to fruition, then all the pieces of the puzzle are in alignment. They all come together. This team's going to be good. And with the 12-team playoff, USC is going to be right there, 10-2, uh, and two, very realistic, even against that schedule. If the offensive line is right, if we see a level of performance that's much closer to 2022 as opposed to 2023, I really do see the offensive line as the nerve center, the, the ultimate key to everything. You know, We saw in the Holiday Bowl, Norm Moss, he's Absolutely. going to make the check I down. I he's going to get the ball out quickly. He's going to make the right read. He's not going to hold the ball too long. He's not going to try to wait forever for the downfield splash play. No, he'll get the ball out. He'll make the responsible decision. If he gets enough help from his offensive line and USC can have a ball control formula where Miller Moss you know, throws for seven yards on first down, then you can mash on second and third. You can control the ball in the Big Ten. You know, if the offensive line is there, this team is going to be really good. And that that's where I am. And I, oh, I'm like, gonna be very like that's, good that's, that's, that I don't team. see I don't see my fundamental view changing as the season uh, uh, arrives. Are, are you drooling as much as I am at the prognosis of having the, uh, the the collaboration in the trenches with these defensive line coaches and Henson and the offensive line and the battles? And how the players can develop by having ironing sharpening iron. When you when you look the at way I am. when you look at the, again, there's proof of concept in in, 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 in Lynn's system. Okay, so let's put that there, right? Look what those guys did, uh, and then now look at the the quality coaching that you have with Nua uh, up there and Henderson. You know these guys, and you know that he's going to install it slow to allow these guys to play fast. That you had Ents. If you watch any part of his Ents, he was talking about how they. You know that he talked about the the the, the run fits and, and the and the being gap sound uh, that he saw issues with you know not getting leverage right having, having the right leverage guys being in the right place uh, and then guys just breaking for those explosive plays. You heard me just pulling my hair out all season talking about these. You know, once you got past that first level, just the guys were running forever. There was no linebacker. There. The linebackers were kind of getting caught up in the trash and couldn't could not shed blocks and they're just getting stuck. He talks about specifically yeah. these guys are tech. These guys are technicians. I know that, and I know Lynn's scheme is going to be again. The basics will be installed. Guys will know where to line up. Hey, that's a plus at USC. Last year, that was a problem. Then you can allow these guys to use the skill that they have. You got I me. Mean, wait, till you guys see Eli Elijah Newby, dude. This kid is fast. Uh, I, there's a lot of there's a lot we have to look forward to, but we got to slow down and realize one. So I've been selling the offensive line, but remember the guys I'm talking about are going to be. Redshirt freshmen, right? True sophomores and true freshmen. So while I believe they'll be good, they won't be anywhere near as good as Henson's um, gonna get them. But they, they'll be. I think it'll be overall. Right. It should be to prove it on the line because here's the reason: they've been playing together together on that second unit for an entire year. So that part about the continuity, yeah. that's the good part you have about them. And then you, and you have them to fill in. So. Um, pump the brakes a little bit on the fact that this could be um, a, a world-class offensive line. It doesn't have to be. Lincoln Riley's calling the plays. We know that they're going to get yards. 
Danton Lynn has shown that he can get a team together in a very short period of time uh, to get you ready. The combination of both, I don't think either one, we're not obviously not going to see as good as both these units can be, right? This young with a young defensive uh, offensive line and with a new scheme, guys learning a new scheme. But in year two in the Big Ten, that's when I think really the rubber's going to hit the road. So, I mean, that's what I'm counting on when I talk about the, the line play. I'm, I'm hearing you, and, I, and I'm definitely with you on that. And I, I'm also paying attention to the fact that we have a lot of redshirt freshmen and sophomores, and I've also been on that tip of these guys have been on the practice squad. They've been grinding together. They've been doing everything together. We didn't get to see a lot of them, but we did get to see them in the Holiday Bowl. And the offensive line, we will go as the offensive line goes, but – and I'm going to allow me to, to sidestep here. I'm not taking anything away from Caleb Williams at all when I say this. But when you are as talented as Caleb was, you could choose to play with the play a little bit longer than you needed to. And when we when we looked at the footage from the Holiday Bowl game, seeing Miller Moss running the offense the way the offense was designed and just running very fast. Yeah, it was a very fast offense. I, our offensive line isn't going to have to block nearly as long, and those offensive linemen are going to benefit from not having to wonder where Superman is. Yeah, there was a, there was a good episode. Mark Hulkin had a guy I forgot his name for the PFF on, and he was talking about that that Caleb uh, was among the leaders and basically uh, after snap hanging on to the ball, uh, and, and he was able to get away with that because he has that great pocket presence. He has that ability to escape, but you saw, like you said, you saw Miller and Moss get the ball out of rhythm. Hit the you know take the underneath routes take the take the short stuff and what was given them so you don't have the holding calls so you don't have so you don't have the sacks so you don't have the fumbles and you saw that offense purring so yeah I mean obviously I'd love that I would take Caleb Williams back next year in a heartbeat but uh, I I like I want to see the different you know how a different driver drives this this Ferrari right it doesn't mean that it's going to be uh, you know any better any worse it's just going to be different and and how how Miller Moss exactly. handles this is going to uh, is going to be interesting for sure. Matt, anything else for uh, Matt for you have for um, Brian for let him go? Well, Brian, I mean, you, you make a good point, but I would pump the brakes on it to it to the extent that, all right, if the three step drop and the quick slant aren't there and you have to survey the field and, and the initial receivers, you know, aren't open your first primary, you know, reads then, you know, you'll, Miller Moss is going to, there's going to be plenty of times when Miller Moss is going to need some time uh, to look at the field. So like, like, I don't want to lean too hard into the idea that the, the O-line won't have to hold blocks as long. I mean, it's a salient point because we did see in the holiday bowl, how things work when a quarterback is willing to make the check down, he's willing to make the short throw, but as with everything, there's a balance. And it's not as though, it's not as though Caleb Williams sabotaged this offense, right? Dorian Singer did not get no, open no, no, on no, a no, consistent no. basis. The other receivers, you know, Mario Williams did not get open on a consistent basis. Jordan Addison did, you know, and so the, the, the high end receivers on this team weren't nearly as good as getting open uh, in 2023 as they were in 2022. So like, it's, it's a combination of things. And I don't want people to, to be too, oversold on the idea that, oh, Miller Moss doesn't need that much time. He's going to need some time, <laughs> especially against LSU, especially against Michigan in September. Um, you know, maybe later in the season, like in October, early November, he'll be so comfortable in the offense by then. Like, I think that's when you might see like offensive linemen not needing to hold their blocks will be a little bit more relevant. But early in the season, like I, I want these guys to dominate. Like, like being decent might not be good enough. There, there will need to be games where this offensive line really takes over. Right. Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, I appreciate talking to you again. Your DMs had a good conversation with you as always, um, and look forward to you. I'm glad you called in. Look forward to calling next week as well. All right, have a good one, guys. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Brian. Right on. Yeah, well, so we got a little bit of a stack here. So uh, hopefully I can move them along in an appropriate manner, not too fast, but not too slow. Kind of Goldilocks just right. Caller, hello. Thank you for taking your time to call in. First off, thanks for watching. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Fellas, Manjeet 
Friday night. Uh, sorry, I couldn't be the first caller. I missed my uh, what is it? My traditional the the first caller, but I want to call in anyway. Well, thanks, thanks for calling. Appreciate you again as a loyal uh, I guess watcher follower. Appreciate you being here. What's on your mind tonight? You want to talk some defense? I'm What's up, brother? Um, Benji, uh, we're talking USC defense. That's kind of an oxymoron, but okay. You know what? If, if he has actually, been, even if he has, has been, been, not will be, has he been, not be. will be. And also, uh, by the way, USC has had some, you, you don't have to go far. Go back to 2008. USC probably has one of the historic defenses of all time. And, and going back, even those Pete, Pete, Pete Carroll, the Reggie Bush and all those guys got all, you know, Lindale, uh, Liner, you know, they got, they got a Colbert. They got all the excitement and all the, all the stories. But it was actually those disgusting defenses, even back in 2003 and in 2004, that had uh, that sooner uh, offensive line, uh, you know, just just crying. So remember that, you know, USC is known for our defense. We've had some, we've had a bad run of defense, but it's certainly not what USC is about. Dude, I'm the U. You, I'm the biggest USC honk you ever find. 2005, they let us down. Oh, King, what's going on? We should have beaten Texas all over the place. That's okay. I'll give you that. No, so you're right. Well, hold on. But man, G, man, man, G, you're just basically you're, you're cherry picking one year. I will give you that. 2005, there were some young guys and some injuries. There were some injuries on that and that 2005 team when you had the you know Brandon Ting out there batting that ball down, flailing at it, which that interception would have pretty solidified that game. Yeah, that, remember also in that season we had to have the heroics of Reggie Bush to come back against Fresno State. Why? Because they gave a, almost a, a billion points to Fresno State, and if Reggie hadn't been there, by the way, free Reggie, you guys are idiots at the NCAA. Uh, if we hadn't had Reggie to have his heroics that night, they would have lost because of the defense. But that's one year out of like nine. You're speaking to the choir. We had great defenses. 2008, Ray Mataluga, Brian Cushing. That was a fuck. Kaluka Mayava. Arizona, we went to Arizona. Arizona, we beat him 14 or nine. I watch every single play, every single game. Clay yeah. Matthews. We had great defenses. Well, yes, Clay Matthews, uh, Mataluga, Cushing, Taylor Mays. Oh, that was a great defense. But the, uh, the sleeper was Oregon speaking state. Joe McKnight, I remember that. Yeah, 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 it's okay. But if, if you can get back to that, our offense is going to be there. I want to see us dominating. Be Oregon. It's pissing me off. Really getting on my nerve right now. Oregon is. What, what, what just, I'm, well, Oregon but, pisses me off all the time, but what, what specifically is pissing you off about Oregon tonight? What they, they, they are recruiting us. They're talking a lot of stuff. They're landing this and that. Oregon is Oregon. We're USC. You're nothing. You're freaking stepsister. That's what it pisses me off. The Oregon's always in the news. We got a four star. We got a five star. And they actually stuck with three stars. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, anything specifically you want to talk about? Well, what my specific is let's 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 get it going. Quarterback, it, it should be open competition. I mean, let the other guy let let the other guy compete. If you don't let him compete, then nobody's going to want to come. Don't say it, it's it's uh, the uh, our existing quarterback's job. Let him compete. Let's see what happens. I think offense will be fine, but let defense. If he can just be like a top twenty defense, I think we'll, we can we can win the Big Ten, man. I have no doubt about that. I'm Michigan's down. They say it's nothing. Um, Ohio State, school Ohio State. We can win. The, we, we can win the Big Ten. I think when USC no, is right, I think when USC is right, USC should be able to compete with anybody in the Big Ten. Uh, Ohio State has been a consistently elite program. So just to dismiss Ohio State, you know, I, I think might be a bit premature, but. Again, I don't, th you know, the, we keep hearing about how USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington have to, to you know, how are we going to handle the Big Ten? How is the Big Ten going to handle these four big, you know, big hitters in the Pac-12 coming in? So a lot of the milk runs, some of these teams are going, uh, you know, uh, 11 and one, uh, you know, uh, 10 and two every year, and just just counting on that, uh, they might now facing some of these bigger hitters have issues getting those win totals. Ryan Day is not a better coach than Lincoln Riley. It's the money back. I mean, you get Caleb Downs, give him money. They're paying for everybody. If, if Lincoln Riley had those kind of players, we'd be fine. The list, we need to level the playing field, man. I, I don't, I, I, this is pissing me really off. They're, they're getting all the good players because of the money. And the USC's not, they're not down to, they're, they're not willing to do that. That's not cool either. 
Lincoln Riley's way 20 times better coach than uh, Ryan Day. Ryan Day's nobody. Well, his record says otherwise, Manjeet. I, I could sit here and we could we could pound on different teams, but I will say this. Going into next year, Manjeet, I'm going to tell you, I, I hope you're sitting down, the two best teams are most likely going to be, someone's probably going to clip this, are pro is most likely going to be Ohio State and, and Oregon. You know, I mean, I, uh, if who, you're going off of conventional wisdom, back. and if you're listening to what everyone else is pretty much saying, that's really the situation. Why? It's because both coaches have been recruiting at a high clip for a long time, and all that team, that roster is coming together right now, and those are going to be two very difficult teams to beat. Now, I think that USC's coaching staff now is superior to both of those coaching staffs, without a doubt in my mind. But do they have the horses at this point? Are they recruiting or buying? What's Are that? they recruiting or buying? That's two different things. Are they recruiting or buying players? Well, I think it, in, in today's it's buying, brother. In, in today's in today's recruiting, it's a little bit of both, isn't it? And it's not that USC can't, and it's not that they're not. I do believe, like I talked about last week, you have you have the spectrum of people in NIL, Matt. You could fill in a little bit for me here. You have the people that are basically letter of the law, which I believe USC is a hell of a lot close to. Why? Because we've been burned a lot by the NCAA. But also, they're just sticking to what they said. And and um, we, we've we heard it. The, the, the USC administration has talked about ad nauseum how they are going to make sure that they're following the rules, doing it the right way, et cetera, et cetera. Then you have the teams that are kind of pushing it, you know, where they know that they're going a little bit close to that inducement level and they're pushing it. And then the third level is, is you have the guys – that you know, like the the Texas A and M, or or for example, Tennessee, that are handing out cash in McDonald's bags. There's there's different levels to all of this, and uh, I think when we get some clarity from the NCAA and USC, that I'll be we'll be in a better place. What do you think, Matt? You know, it starts with being able to do the job on the field, and I think that if USC's defense and the team you know make significant, substantial forward steps this season, then you should see the recruiting, you know, even with Oregon and Ohio State having, you know, such robust NIL operations. I mean, if USC makes the forward strides this year that it didn't make last year, you know, you should see the larger outlook improve. And, I, you know, like I mean, Angie, you know, we, we, we talked about USC's need to be better in the NIL space. One big testing ground is going to be this spring in the portal. You know, where's the Jordan Addison Where's the Bear Alexander that we've gotten each of the last two spring portal windows? Like so that, so that is that's going to be a testing ground uh, for this staff for the school's NIL operation. And like the, I, I agree with you. USC needs to be a player. USC needs to be a big hitter and make decisions uh, accordingly. It should be noted that this defensive staff, Jen Cohen, shelled out the dollars to to get yes. these guys in and to to land these four elite coaches you know four out of seven uh now we need to see that move to the nil space so like you know i agree with you uh, like there's no there's no real philosophical uh disagreement here um that but that that's just the lay of the land right now and there's a reason why kids have been flocking to you name one of them ohio state Al uh, alabama um georgia programs like that because look at the nfl draft in a couple of weeks right watch what's going to happen and watch how many of those names from those schools are called. That's going to begin to happen when you have coaches that are developing because that's what they're selling. If you listen to them talk this week or even going back to the hiring of all these great coaches, they are they are selling NFL development. They're saying, come here, develop okay. us with, with us for three to four years. We'll have you uh, ready to go make millions to make NIL let me look ask like you, nothing. One more question. Uh, how many uh, how many receivers does Oregon develop? How tell them and those guys go to Oregon? They tell them about the money, bro. They're developing the receivers now at Oregon, really. Yeah, I, but you know what? Here's the thing: there's a lot of receivers going up to Oregon, but we're doing just fine. <laughs> look, look, look at the NFL. Look at what we have in the NFL, and look at the development on that well, side. Well, that's what I'm saying. We need to let, we need to pay them. That the USC doesn't have money. Well, I, I think on, I think I think Riley's getting... made it clear, Manji, that he doesn't want to pay. He wants guys that want to be here, that want to be Trojans, that want to get developed, that want to get to the league, not guys that want a paycheck right out of high school and they haven't proven anything on a collegiate field. If Manji, you get your ass kicked, then we're gonna keep losing. All right, Manji, I, thanks, I, thank I, you I, so I, much I, as I, always for calling in. We got a couple calls behind you. Appreciate you calling in, fight on, and have a good week. Hope to hear from you next week. All right. Um, yeah, I mean.
we can keep talking about NIL, and I think you're on it, Matt. I think it's just going to be about what, what they've been selling. They're selling development. And yes, guys at USC, guys, by the way, they are getting paid. The NIL at USC is solid. It's not, it's not as dire. And don't freak out about these recruiting classes. They're going to get better. Paul, right, thank you for calling in. Um, what's your name, and where are you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Gary from Dana Point. Good to see you guys. Gary, great to hear from I've you. I've been listening to... Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm not going to be uh, – some of the point I want to make has already been discussed, but I, I, as you know, I've re often referenced the fact since 1953 I've been watching the Trojans, and, uh, you know, every year you sort of try to have optimism and so forth. But I'm beginning to think I'm not drinking Kool-Aid. I'm beginning to think that, that there's something real going on here. Last year, when I look at last year, it was like the old joke, uh, apart from that, Mrs. Lincoln, how'd you like to play kind of thing? It was terrible. Um, and we all know the reasons why. And Caleb, that poor guy, he had to get over 45 points a game or we didn't stand a chance. And he knew that. And that's why he eschewed the opportunity to take, take maybe a small game. And he went for the big play a whole lot. I don't think we'll have to do that. And I think that and I share your optimism, Tim, concerning the, the offensive line, but I don't even think they have to be great. They just have to be B plus, B minus, just okay, because we can afford to, 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 to go three and out a few times when you don't have to come up with 49 points to win. But so I'm optimistic uh, uh, about where we're headed. I am actually believe with what I've heard that these defensive coaches they seem like the cream of the crop. If they can't do it, God knows nobody can. And I believe they can keep our point level down to where we don't have to come up with 50 points a game. So let's say we have to score 30. Uh, we can score 30. Uh, we have 35. We can do that. Look what Miller Moss did. Uh, I think he's a very capable quarterback. He's very, very smart. He took the short stuff when it was there, and we marched right down the field. And we don't have to have... 10 drives in a row scoring seven points a drive. We just have to have the right drives when we need it with the defense keeping us in the game. So I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. And I just, my only point in calling is to say, you know, I don't think it's Kool-Aid. I think there's something real happening here and God help me. I'm, I'm on board the train and I've got my slurping Kool-Aid right here. And I think it's real stuff. But anyway, I, I just want to express optimism. And a lot of guys Hank, that I hang out with are beginning to feel it. And part of it, too, is you guys provide such great information for us. And, you know, you, you give the bona fides for the defensive people. And I agree, though, the key is what Henson does. Anyway, I don't have anything new. Just wanted to voice some optimism here. And thank you guys for all that you present to us because we, a lot of us, live and die over what you guys say. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I live for you calling each week. And I'm not going to – that that is the absolute truth, Gary. Uh, I, I get it. I, you and my dad and a lot of people that have been blessed enough to watch, again, the glory years of John McKay, uh, you know, the, the John Robinson years, even the 80s, man. There was some, you know, when I was growing up, when I was really little, you know, watching those games was just, you know, some great bowl games and great players, you know, and then the late 80s. And then we had that, the dark times, you know, you lived through all of it, right? So uh, it's good to see when we had yep. the, the Pete Carroll years, that little, that little moment in Camelot for a while. It's gone, it got a bit dark, but. You know, I do think with this defensive additions, I think we are coming back the right direction. Well, one last comment I'll make, and I agree, is that when I looked at the season last last season and, and I looked at the schedule, I started to get sweaty hands immediately <laughs> thinking, oh, boy, how are we going to do this? The, the, and after the San Jose State game, I was really nervous. But now, um, you know, you're as good as the team you assemble. And if this isn't a good defensive staff, if this isn't an overall good coaching staff, then I don't know where there is one. We're, we've got to be in the top 10 in the country in that for sure. Anyway, thank you guys. Take care. Fight on. Fight on. Thanks, Gary. Great call. As always, Gary, I can't argue with one bit of that. Again, love it when you guys call. Have a great point to make like Gary does every single week. Hits it and signs off. Thank you, Gary. Uh, please call back again. Really appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye. Fight on. Yeah, it's hard to argue with any of that. I think that we have some bright times ahead, Matt. I mean, I know I'm I'm 
I always play the good cop, you play the bad cop. I play the Kool-Aid, you play the lemonade, but it's a nice combination going right now. I think I think I've been a little more pessimistic lately, you know, on some things, and you've been a little more optimistic. And I think we're kind of somewhere between the middle of us. I think it's probably right where the season's gonna go. But I do know it's going in one direction. Uh, a big shout out to my buddy uh USCJ out there, fight on. Uh, you guys, uh, USC baseball opened up tonight um, in in uh, the desert. Uh, I don't believe I have an updated score. Do you? I, I think they lost, though. I, that's why I don't want to talk about it. Uh, Matt, I, I do believe that they did lose that game. I'll, I'll double check. Let me confirm that later. But um, it wasn't looking. I, it wasn't looking good. Uh, caller, thank you for calling in. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey Tim, it's Adam calling from Georgia. How you doing, Adam? I'm doing great. How are you doing? All right. Great. Uh, great show as always. Uh, I just got a couple of brief points. I think that Lincoln Riley deserves credit because he's put together a great defensive coaching staff and I, and I give him credit for that. And my question though is, do we have the players on defense to execute? I mean, we were 18th in recruiting and we've got 13, four stars and three, uh, three stars. And so I guess what I'm wondering is, you know, what defensive scheme might be the most effective? And I, I kind of lean towards a four two five to highlight our speed. Um, and I just wonder what your thoughts are on that. And also, uh, Matt, I was wondering what record do you think um, would be acceptable to keep Riley for another year? I think it would be eight and four. And then I think in a second year after that, nine and three would be enough to keep him for another year. And I think that that's realistic. So I'm just wondering what your guys' thoughts are on that. Adam, I think that the main thing is, does USC look a lot better on the field than it did a year ago? Because with the Big Ten schedule, could be that the Trojans will lose some close games in which they play pretty well. Um, like, it, and it's going to be such a new thing in the Big Ten. Like, USC could go eight and four, but could lose four blowouts, and that would not inspire a lot of confidence going into next year. USC could go seven and five, and and you know play. Michigan, you know, 24, 21 in Ann Arbor and could lose a few other really close games uh, with some bad calls, things like that. So, you know, I, I mean, I would say that, you know, you do, you probably all things being equal need to win at least eight or nine games this season to think that the program is on the right track, but we have to look at the whole uh, context of everything. And the main thing is to see substantial improvement such that, Everything's moving forward. Everything seems to be going in the right direction coming out of 2024. That that's really the main thing. And, and you know, we 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 I don't want to rehash this too much, but it is it does merit saying that, you know, Lincoln Riley retaining Alex Grinch set back the program a year like that. Was, 2023 was a wasted year for everybody. We can't really do anything about 2023, but at least Lincoln Riley has done something about 2024. So if there is significant improvement, the record might not necessarily reflect it. But if we see that improvement on the field, and it's pretty clear to see, and like everyone can can you know agree on that, then you know th this program's go headed in the right direction and and uh, brighter days will be ahead. And then to, to your first question, uh, Brian uh, hit that from um, San Fernando Valley. He talked about the fact uh, that they they do they run a four two five as a hybrid. It's got I mean it's got multiple fronts. Uh, I, I, just go back and watch. Just go back and watch what uh, what UCLA did to to USC in that game. And I think we have yes there were some issues right. with offensive line, but we we had a good we had a good offense. And look what that defense did to us. So schematically, I, I think that's we're actually in and, and we're playing with house money. Because I think that I think this is a system. He comes, you know, he he talks about he, here's the names he drops. He talks about, you know, Rex Ryan. He he, he played with McDonald. You know, what I mean, he he comes from that from that tree. And those defenses, you, you look at the Ravens defenses, they've been among the best in the NFL at the highest level of football. I think the scheme is going to be solid. Where you're gonna see is is do they have in year one with Lynn. Have they assembled enough pieces? And again, I think we're going to see a lot of traction happening as soon as spring ball is, you know, is over. And all these guys that look at their depth chart and say, hey, man, I was a five star when I got here a year ago. And I'm not going to sit behind X, Y or Z. So I'm on my way. And that's where we picked up Bear Alexander last year. Uh, I can't remember when did Lucas come. Did Lucas come also in the spring? I, I don't remember. Did he come earlier? Mm hmm. 
Uh, so, I mean, I think there's going to be a second. This, you know, recruiting isn't yeah. over yet. Recruiting now is just stretched out. It used to be, you know, February was like everyone was was jumping. You know, that was the day. That was our big day. Now it starts in December, and it's not over. And you know, to well, it's like April. It feels like so, um, and even later, if you some of these guys yeah, are hanging I, around looking for nil deals. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the key is, um, I think physicality. We have to become a more physical team. As far as nil goes, I mean, USC has more money than God. It costs sixty thousand dollars a year to go there. They've got to find a way to boost their nil. But uh, I don't want to take any more time, guys. Great show as always. Um, good talking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adam. Great call as always. Appreciate being here. Fight on. Take care. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it worked out last year in year one. And the reason why uh the reason why it did work out is because he did take his time in you know installing it. Uh the guys at UCLA were were uh, the word is uh, guy someone texted me said that they were complaining about the fact it was so slow. So I mean They'll make sure they know it. We're not going to have the situation right before. The guys will be able to use their athletic ability and play fast. Hi, caller. Thank you for calling in. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is John from Detroit. How you guys doing tonight? John, great to hear from you again. Hey, man, listen. This week is funny because I've been looking at, and I know we're talking defense tonight, and uh, what I love about both of you guys is it seems like you balance each other off pretty good, you know, because, hey, <laughs> I mean, how can we not be drinking the Kool-Aid or some people like may not be drinking the Kool-Aid because it did. A lot of people are saying, well, we want to take a, a wait and see, you know, approach because, of, you know, how the defense played last year. And really, I guess with the defense, I guess it's really been going on since actually since that championship game uh, when we lost to Utah. I think that's when it started all of that. Um, so of course last year, you know, we all was disappointed, but listen, I was, I, I want to talk about the schedule tonight because first last year, I mean, when I, when I found out what the schedule was going to be, I was just like, wow, this is insane. This is going to be crazy, but fellas, I was studying it, studying the schedule. So I'm saying what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's like, it's the first six games. And then. The first six games, that's the hardest part of the schedule. And then the second half of the schedule is basically is that because of what's going on at Washington, they're probably not going to see the team that we thought they were going to be. And also Notre Dame, we, we you know, we got them last. But, yeah, we, we man, we, we owe them. You know, I mean, we, we owe them for beating us last year. We definitely owe them. But again, I think it, it it flips this year, you know, to the point to where, uh, you know, because when I was looking at the schedule, I was like, okay, so you got LSU the first game, and I understand that, and we got Michigan a few weeks after that, yeah, you know, and even 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 going up to Penn State, but I, I think the hardest part of the schedule is we got them like I think we got to go to Michigan. And then I think we have to go, I don't know if it's Maryland. It might be Minnesota, and then it might be, I don't, it might be Maryland. I, I can't remember because I don't have it in front of me. But those, the, that game, to me, that's the hardest stretch almost. Not not about how the teams are, but the hardest stretch is, is that we're going to be making three road uh, trips back east. But then the last part of the schedule, I don't know if y'all really even looking at this thing, man. We're going to be out west a lot, which I think that's great. I mean, even, you know, you're playing UCLA, but you're still in California, you know. And so I'm like, this thing may not be as hard as we thought it was going to be. And I understand. Yeah, I understand the guys got to be coached up. And some things got to happen. We got to get some breaks and things that got to go away. But I'm not as afraid of the schedule, even coming here. Um, and Michigan always had pretty good players and stuff like that. But, you know, the, the thing about them, even them on the offensive line, man, they've lost a lot. They they have lost a lot on the offensive line. So I, I, I'm just – that's just my opinion, fellas. And I, I, I could be wrong about this, but – Well, man, I'm, let, I'm let me just, jump in. I, I'm not 
Let me yeah. jump in, John. Uh, someone made the point, and this is a point that I, I made earlier, is that we I, I said that most likely the two most – I'll say it this way. The two most talented teams, according to 247, right? We'll do it that. We'll, we'll wrap it that way, uh, are going to be Ohio State and Oregon. They're just going to have the most talent, right? I don't think they have nearly the two best coaching staffs, especially that's for sure. But they're going to have a lot of talent. And if you look up and down this schedule right here, you don't see uh, Ohio State. You don't see Oregon. Okay. So that's one thing. Right. We have Michigan and we play them on the road. Circle that one. We play LSU, like you said, early. Go ahead and circle that one on a neutral site early. But here's the thing about both those staffs. LSU, new coordinator, right? Uh, right. Coordinators. Right. Look at Michigan. Completely new coaching staff. So um, it's, it's, it's not like they're rolling into 2024 right where they left off last year either. So I, I do like the continuity that USC – had on the offensive side of the ball and then bringing in uh, the, the, the improvements on defense. It ha- can, we've talked about it. We've been hoping that Lynn can get this thing going really fast. Will he be able to do it as fast as he did at UCLA? He's going to have to, because we will face a very talented and hungry and big uh, LSU team for our first start you know, of the season. Then we're going to go out and it's going to be playing a rough and play in the big house in front of over a hundred thousand play. Uh, you know how many of these kids have ever played in front of a hundred over a hundred thousand people in a stadium? You know it's going to be <laughs> pretty damn uh, eye opening for these kids. So I, I do believe that you know we have the makings of a good run. I do think that the schedule isn't horrible, but it isn't great either. It's going to be. Uh, and a, there'll be a lot of attrition. We are not deep at some positions with with veteran players with experience. That's what that's what a football season is about, and that's what might be trouble in the Big Ten. Matt, what are your thoughts on the schedule? Well, you know, it, I mean, it's not going to be easy. I I would say that you know the quality of offense in the Big Ten is such that if this defensive staff really gets these guys into shape, really turns everything around as we think they can. Uh, then, you know, like USC is going to be in a lot of games, but it's can the offensive line hold up against Big Ten defensive fronts, front sevens? That's really going to be the measure of this team. And, you know, Mark Rogers, you, we all know Mark Rogers, like he's the godfather. He's the reason Tim and I have this show. And he's the reason we have our Monday show at the Voice of College Football. Mark Rogers, you know, is always there to remind us, hey, you know, Big Ten offenses might not be the bee's knees, but – Big 10 defensive linemen, Big 10 linebackers, like the the fact, the NFL factory for the Big 10, it, it's pretty big league. And that's going to be the main issue for USC. Uh, it's offensive front being able to measure up against NFL grade talent uh, on, on the various Big 10 rosters uh, that we're going to see. So, you know, I, I think I think USC is going to be playing a lot of close games. Uh, this season uh, and how USC measures up in fourth quarters, how the the stamina of this team uh, emerges, how the strength of this team emerges. You know, again, that's going to be a referendum on Benny Wiley. But with all that having been said about the Big Ten, the Big Ten, and also Notre Dame, uh, which, you know, entirely relevant, interesting, important line of questioning, to me, the biggest game of the season is the first one against LSU. You know, how USC comes through that game, high profile game, Brian Kelly, national television. Um, If USC wins that game, you get so much belief, energy, confidence, optimism coming into the program. And it can just carry through the rest of the season. Whereas if USC gets dump trucked in that game, holy hell, it's going to be a real gut punch and an adjustment for all of us uh, to make, and we're going to be backpedaling here. So to me, the LSU game is going to yeah. set the tone, uh, you know, in terms of getting to the 12 team playoff, 10 and two would do that. And I think if USC beats LSU, 10 and two becomes very, very realistic. So in many ways, as, as important as it is to focus on how USC measures up at the big 10, like how can we not focus on that? Nevertheless, I think that the LSU opener is really the most important game of the whole season. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, great call, John. Thank you so much. As it's every time you call, on, it's a pleasure. 
Uh, I can hear the passion and, and your knowledge of the team is, is awesome to hear. Hope that you could call in next All week right, as guys. well. All right, thank you. Thanks again, John. All right, fight on, guys. Fight on. All right. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Matt. It's gonna be a set the. It's gonna set the. Uh, it's gonna also with the recruiting, you know, the recruiting cycle. It's gonna, you know, uh, Gerard Marcina says it's not all about the wins and losses for these kids all the time. It's relationships, but at the same time, getting that positive momentum. You have Julian Lewis, Juju Lewis. He's apparently recruiting guys out there. Uh, wins are wins, and it's not just a win. It's Hey, look what this look what this new coaching staff is doing. It's again proof of concept that USC is moving in the right direction. Thanks again, uh, caller. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, what's going on, boys? How you guys doing? It's LV Live. Fight on from the East Coast, man. How's everybody doing tonight? Fight on, LV. How you doing? I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. How, how do I sound? Am I clear? Loud and clear. Awesome, awesome. Listen, man, I haven't called in some time, man. It's been pretty busy on the East Coast, of course, with the Knicks doing so well. We'll talk about that later. But anyway, um, I've been keeping an eye on everything that's going on with USC, man. Still keeping my ear to the pavement. They're looking really good, man. I mean, I really like the new culture. You gotta, People have to understand, you got to be patient with this. This is going to be a new shift change, right? This is all like a new culture change as far as defensively. And also, too, I think with all these teams kind of taking a step back, People losing so many players. Michigan lost basically their whole team. Of course, um, LSU, they lost their quarterback, right? So this is a big change for a lot of teams. The only team worried about is Ohio State, but we don't play them until possibly the Big Ten Championship. So I think it's going to be a very, very successful season. And also, too, guys, let's remember, the Pac-12 was really, really tough last year. We have to understand the type of offenses and teams that we went against. Hence, the Pac-12 championship champion was in the national championship. So that tells you how good our conference was. I don't think the Big Ten was even close to being as good as the Pac-12 last year. So I think you're going to see a total change in how we play, and it was definitely defensively. And I think it's going to show based on the level of competition in the Big Ten because I don't think it was even close to what the Pac-12 was last year. What say you guys? I, I went and ran around, I don't know what show it was, talking about uh, stealing the idea I got from the Reina Troy people that, that, that who's going to be like, so after facing Michael Penix last year, you know, and, 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 and seeing what he could do, going up against that Oregon offense with Bo Nix, right? And then Fafita at Arizona. You know, who are we going to see in the Big Ten that has quarterback play and, and offenses? like that this season because we we don't play ohio state and, and and we don't play oregon yeah i'm that's a big point uh, earlier on um all i do is win 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 basically said he he said it he's like the, the offenses aren't that good so you guys are almost by default are gonna be a top 20 defense i don't know that that's again i mean obviously that de- there's some defenses it's a different style of defense it's a grind you out kind of defense uh and, and it's not like they don't play any defense in the big 10 but you you nailed it when you said that we're not going to hit defenses like uh, offenses like we saw last year, uh, Matt. You, you know, uh, in, in terms of in terms of what we're going to see in the Big Ten, I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of mystery to it. You know, it's it's not going to be the the style of play in the in the Pac-12 like that. That's going to be big, and and I do think that. You know, the, the argument that we're not going to see the level of offensive skill position talent in the Big Ten that we, we've seen in the Pac-12, absolutely. But the point I was just making was about defensive skill, and that's Mark Rogers' point of emphasis. De- the defensive skill, the defensive heft, the defensive force, defensive toughness in the Big Ten, like that's legit. You know, even, even the not very good offensive teams, like Iowa is a representative example of this. Illinois is a, you know, to an extent, uh, can be an example of that. Northwestern, uh, definitely an example. Northwestern's a lot like Iowa in that, uh, you know, you're, these these offenses are not going to light it up, but their defenses are for real. Like we saw Northwestern um, shut down Utah, and I know it was Utah's backups, but like USC couldn't shut down Utah's backups. Um, but obviously, that's something where that's not going to happen again uh, with Alex Grinch. Uh, being gone, thankfully, but you, you all get the point that the defensive skill in the Big Ten is going to be better than what we've seen in the Pac-12. But the hope is that the offensive skill is going to be so much worse, so much less 
in the Pac-12 or in the Big Ten compared to what was in the Pac-12 that USC is going to derive the benefit of that. And we'll see how that equation balances out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you would know about this as well, LV. Definitely. Guy named Saquon Barkley. So in 2016, we had a pretty damn good defense. But we saw what that right. Joe Joe Moorhead did with you know with that uh, off the sorry the Penn State offense did against USC, uh, and and that was with a mediocre noodle armed quarterback, but you know a good running back, and a good offense doesn't have to be a high flying powered offense with the, with a with a Heisman or All American quality quarterback. It can be a really good run offense that's led by a, a superior running back and a great run game. So, yeah, I, I think we need to be careful. Um, but I do think overall, right, because here's the thing, even a good run game, it takes more time. Therefore, you get less plays. Therefore, you get less score. So these numbers are all are all relative when it comes to statistically being in the top 20 or whatever. But at the end of the day, it comes down to wins and losses. And I still think I'm with both of you guys on the end of the ledger. I think that our offense is going to be – is going to be – unstoppable well, not unstoppable but, but it's going to be able to move the ball even the better uh more talented defenses in the big 10 and then i think this revamp all we've been asking from our defense is just to be just good you know not great not excellent just good and i think we should have a solid uh, defense hey, lv i know i can do this for you because we know each other hold on one second lv i need to get to a couple call uh, a couple things here first off gary uh gary thank you so much for this is gary with the 20 dollars super chat not only does he always make my day with his calls, but he, he always supports the show financially. Gary, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. And we also had um, Fight On. Fight On, thank you so much. Fight On gifted um, five of you guys out there memberships. And I don't know who, where, where it shows that they, they pull them up. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, I guess we'll find out. Tell me in the chat if you've uh, received them. But uh, also, I'm scrolling at the bottom here. We have some great supporters and members. Uh, one more little piece, you guys. I think we're like 15 away. I'm not sure, but we're 15 away from 5,000. I mean, it seems like I've been saying this for two months, uh, Matt. It's almost getting depressing to me. Uh, we just need like 15 more people to get that incredible barrier we've been trying to get past uh, of 5,000. If you guys could just take one minute of your time, if you've not already subscribed and you've enjoyed the show, if not, don't worry about subscribing. But if you have enjoyed the show, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see it's every week here, Friday at 6, and then every Monday at 8 p.m. with Mark Rogers. Appreciate all of you guys being here. Anything else on your mind, LV? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of just wanted to kind of if, – if, if, you, know, you guys made a lot of great points, as always. You guys are an amazing show. But like I'm, I mean, I'm just sitting here looking at the schedule. I mean, Utah State, we're not really worried about them. Ash, at Michigan, they lost everybody. Are we really worried about Wisconsin? No. Then we got to go to Minnesota. Are we really worried about them? No. You look at you look at Penn State. They have Drew Aller coming back. They predict. I think they're going to be pretty solid next year. They didn't lose a lot of guys, so maybe that could be a tough one there. Having that Coliseum. But then we go at Maryland. They just lost to his brother. I don't think they gave him an extra year of eligibility, so he's not coming back. So you got Rutgers at, get, at the Coliseum. We're not worried about them. Washington lost everybody. Nebraska is going to probably have a tough defense. Offense, they're going to struggle, but defense, they're solid. And then at UCLA, and then we got Notre Dame at the Coliseum. So now you've got to think about this schedule. I mean, we, we, this is a beautiful place for Lincoln Riley to be right now. He should be, be extremely happy licking his chops because now with this defense, and like you guys stated, I don't see them allowing 30, 40 points anymore. I, I just don't see it because it's you're changing the culture. They're bringing in certain guys that match the defensive structure of the new defensive coordinator along with everyone else that they're on the staff there. So now it's a different mentality, a different attitude. I think I think it's going to be a lot of surprises. Also, too, guys, let's remember, Miller Moss is in his second year, going to be in his third year in this offense. Third year in this offense. So I think we're going to put up big-time points, right? But that's my points. I'm out of here. Guys, remember, as always, awesome show, awesome show. I love you guys' show, and uh, fight on for the East Coast, guys. Take care. Fight on, LB. Uh, j just amazing calls always. I tell you what, Matt, these guys make our job a lot easier. That's why I love these calling shows, right? It's, it's the callers bring all the content. We can just hang out and have a good time talking to them. But, but yeah, um, if you look on the schedule, there's a lot of new coaches that we'll be facing, a lot of new coordinators, and that's gonna be that will be helpful to what it looked like initially a very daunting season. Hello, caller. Uh, you're on with Matt and Tim. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. I got to get my pet some anti-inflammatory medicine, so I need to check out. So, if Tim, if you can just uh, 
hold it down for the remainder of the show. I got to scram. Yeah, we'll wrap it up really quick here. Yeah, no problem. I got a couple okay. calls and a couple super chats. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate your time. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, uh, caller. Let me get through these really quick as well. So, uh, again, from Fight On, thank you so much for a $20 super chat. After yesterday's press conference, Coach Riley heard the outside noise loud and clear, um, expecting a lot, expecting a more button up approach team. All eyes point to Hen Henson and Wiley. Year one, nine and three possible, 10 and two. Year two is go time. Frank from Tucson. Frank, uh, agree with all of that i think it was riley the one of the best things that could have happened was everybody calling out riley's coaching man card right by calling his team soft saying he doesn't care about defense i think that might have been one of the best things that could have happened to us it we i could have done without this last season's record i would like to see these guys have uh got to a bull game and got a little more going but uh, short of that uh it, it was an absolute a uh, great thing to have him learn that lesson and make the changes uh, that he has. Really excited about that. Sorry about the hold there, caller. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? How you doing, man? Uh, my name is Craig. I'm calling from uh, New York. Craig from New York? Yep, calling from New York. How you doing, man? Two calls are real from New York. I'm doing great. What's on your mind tonight? You talking net? You want to talk some defense? What, what do you want to talk about? I just want I just want you to tell me if I'm crazy or not cuz I have a thought. Okay. <laughs> Let me know if I'm crazy. No, go for it. What do you think? I think I think we have the best two quarterbacks in the conference. So you think Maiva okay? The two best in I the so the, the two best in the Big 10. In the Big 10. I think you have the two best quarterbacks in the Big 10. Like I don't think nobody maybe the Penn State quarterback Drew Aller? I don't see anybody. Yeah, I, I don't see anybody. That scares me. Will Howard. Will Howard at, at Ohio State? USC, I don't, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see anything. I think I think we have the best two quarterbacks. And with that being said, if we have the best two quarterbacks in the conference, I think we can win 11 games. 11 games. Okay, it well. crazy. Well, hey, listen. Nothing's crazy because this is what the spring's for, right? I mean, we're not even spring yet, right? This, that's what that's what this time of year is for. Everybody's undefeated. Everyone's looking at Natty. Um, I would caution you <laughs> about um, – no, I won't. You know what? Be as optimistic as you want. After, I mean, I'll tell you what. After watching the defensive staff talk, you know what helps offense? A good defense. And last year, um, you know, Caleb thought he had to score on every single play. He was forcing things. Uh, which compounded issues they have on the offensive line. So there's a lot of reasons to feel good about next year. And the, the biggest one I think is going to be that this defense, I do believe, is going to take a lot of pressure off the offense, which will allow a guy uh, who's in his third season uh, under under you know under Lincoln Riley uh, and Miller Moss, and then you have the uh, Mayaba coming over. He'll be a true sophomore from UNLV. Kid's got all the tools. Big kid, fast, big live arm. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm sure we could get a lot of uh, Big Ten people coming here. I feel I'll, I'll take the heat if they want to come in and tell us. But you know what? I think that they will be among the two best in the conference. Uh, we'll have to see because none, none of them really have started. You know, uh, well, sorry, that's not true. Maiva has, but that was at a different level of competition. Neither one of these guys have played a season in the Big Ten, and that is real. You guys, we got to remember one thing: I tease the Big Ten defenses and offenses all the time, and I say that they're they're statistically really good because of the because of the quality of the quarterbacks and, and the offenses. But, it, you know, it's kind of hard to refute how many NFL guys are putting on, on the defensive side of the ball, right, compared to the Pac-12. So yeah. we we can play that game both ways, offenses or defense, which one's stronger. I, I'd like to see it. Hey, I hope you're right. Um, I think both of them are uber talented. I know we have the best play caller in football. I don't, I don't feel I'm a homer saying that. And so uh, add those two things together with a with a developing offensive line that I do think is going to turn some heads. I do think we're going to surprise the people. And the fact that our defense can be considerably better, that will not put all that pressure on this young offense, I think you might have a winner. 11 wins. I'm not doing any predictions yet, but that seems a little bit little bit uh, rich for my blood, but I would love to see it. But, you know, Craig? I only see, I only see, one, I only see one tough game. LSU. I, I think we can beat every... We, we like that other coach said, we owe Notre Dame ass with it. Penn State, they never can win a big game. Wisconsin, Minnesota, 
Rutgers, like I we might just lose one game. I don't see I don't see a loss. I really like well, okay. I'm looking for a loss. <laughs> okay, so I, I so here's what here's what I'm gonna give you. This is my super super early, not knowing a whole lot about the season. <laughs> we haven't even seen seen spring ball. Who's gonna be the starters, right? Um, but right at the bat, I'm, I'm thinking we. I think we have a. I think I'm sure the the, the teams. I think we have a um, a, a a decent chance of losing that LSU game is like like Matt says, gonna be a huge litmus test. So boom, that one off the bat. Utah State. Uh, that's gonna be a warm up game. Uh, anytime you're playing at Michigan. Unless you're Appalachian State, I'm kidding, Wolverine fans. I'm kidding. Uh, they're gonna be a, they're gonna be a, a tough out. Uh, the Badgers, you're too a fickle. We got to go up against a secondary. They'll be coached by Alex Grinch. I'm kidding, Badger fans. I'm kidding. That's I'm 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 kidding. But you know that they're talking about a well coached team. You know the fickle is gonna bring in uh, a well coached team to the Coliseum. Do I think we lose that game? No. But is it gonna be a cakewalk? Probably not. Then we gotta go row the boat in Minnesota. I think that's a win for us. We're lucky that we have Penn State at home. Obviously, on the road, uh, anyone's ever seen us play in Happy Valley knows that it's not a very happy place for us at Beaver Stadium. But I do think um, that that's a winnable game. But I'm certainly, I'm certainly not going to say that USC is going to be favored in that game. There's a good chance that we're not. Um, Maryland, uh, they lose a lot. They lose their quarterback. So I think that's a win. Rutgers, I think that's a win. Washington, as we speak right now, uh, Fish has got a hell of a a battle uphill. He's swimming upstream. Sorry. Uh, so he's gonna. So that game is definitely winnable. Most likely a win, I think. Uh, and then uh, then you talk about the Cornhuskers. We got them at home. Um, great fans. I can't wait to see them every time the Cornhuskers come out. It's just a great time to see a good fan base. But I I like uh, our our odds of that game. UCLA is a mess. Give us a win there. And then a tough game. Uh, tough game. But we have Notre Dame at home. Uh, which is another bonus. So the schedule, the way it lies out, is is, is good and winnable. But there, to think that we're we're roll through this eleven and one, that is very optimistic. You know, as much as high as I am on our defense oh. right now, as much as I believe in Lincoln Riley, and I, I just uh, I would be careful about that. You want to know why? You want to know why I believe eleven and one? This is really simple. The reason why I believe we're going to win eleven games is because I believe that the Big Ten hasn't seen this type of offense. And it's gonna it's gonna give them problems year one. Maybe year two they might be able to slow us down. Year three, but I think this first this first year we're gonna have everybody's number. They haven't seen this kind of offices. They're not prepared to play us. Agreed. Like I I can't I can't even think of a noteworthy offense in the Big Ten that makes me say okay, well, yeah, we have to really like you know super scheme for this. Like I think we're gonna have everybody's number. We're gonna shock everybody. And the first time they played USC in a long time, I don't think nobody's gonna be able to score with us. Maybe Oregon and Ohio State, but we're not gonna play them until we get to the conference championship game. But I don't see anybody in that schedule that could really score with us. And except for the you know the, the Notre Dame game, that's that's a rivalry game. That's gonna be a good game, but we owe them. But I don't think the rest of those teams are gonna be able to score with us. I don't see it. All right. Well, hey, listen. Um John, all valid points. I'm not going to argue the point. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping you are absolutely right. Uh, you, you, you brought it. You made some really good points. Um, thank you so much again for, for calling in. Again, having two calls from New York is awesome. Love getting the out of state calls. Uh, really appreciate your support of the Trojans, and I hope you call back soon. Thanks, man. Fight on. All right, fight on, John. Yeah, that looks like it's it for callers. Um, and I lost my wingman, so I'm flying without a net. But let's just get through some of the. Uh, some of the questions we have here in chat that I've been trying to star as much as I can. Again, um, fight on sent the, this one and then also followed up with another $5 set. Again, thank you so much for, we really appreciate uh, your generosity, uh, Frank. Uh, oh, I forgot EA sports announced the return of NCAA football. Excellent work guides, uh, Frank from Tucson. I was a diehard. I'll admit it. I used to play it all the time. I used to play on dynasty mode and all that stuff. So I, I did, I did love those. EA games have went away a long time. It's been a while since it's been out. I haven't played it in years. Uh, and I'd be lying to you if I said I'm not going to pick it up for my kids' console. So uh, that's that's definitely in the works as well. So Frank, thanks again for supporting us. Fight on. And then uh, I guess we have one person, Alex. Thank you for becoming a member, you guys. Appreciate all of you guys in the community. We are 
open to suggestions. You guys can go ahead and you can um, send me a DM if you guys are on. You know, maybe we got to set up an email for you guys. A lot of you guys aren't on Twitter. That's just the best way to get a hold of me. But I'm Tim underscore Prangley at uh, on Twitter and on Instagram. So if you want to, um, you know, if, if you want to get in touch with me, any ideas for the show, please feel free to contact me there if you'd like. Um, matter of fact, that's where I spoke with Brian. I knew Brian was, Brian Dobbins was calling in because I've been talking to him all week uh, on, on Twitter. So I'm, I'm available if you guys want to talk. As long as it's about uh, SC football and not about politics, I'm, I'm all ready to do it. Um, and then do we know who the other four? I mean, I'm really bad at this. I'm kind of new to the whole member and, and trying to track the member thing. Some, uh, it, was, it was donated. Fight on donated five of them. And I saw Alex, new member. Uh, I don't know if he paid, played it or not. Um, Brian asked me, are we going to run the ball? I absolutely believe they're going to run the ball. Again, the, the guys I'm talking about, our offensive line, are going to be dudes that are going to run the ball. I think that they're going to be dedicated to run the ball, just as the kind of play that they have uh, in the in the Big Ten. But also, if you look at the teams that, that were rolling under, under Riley, he does run the ball, you guys. And um, running is a big part, especially, you know, we want to say Miller's going to roll in there and just take, a, you know, be, be a starting quarterback. But we have to remember what's going to be like for Miller when he goes on the road is for, for his first road game. And guess where his first role? I should know. So we have the game in Vegas. So he will have that under his belt. But then a true road game, his first true road game is going to be in the big house in front of over 100,000 people. You're going to need – there might be moments in that game where it's going to be pretty rough. Now, there's a guy out there that I trust to have the 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 the, the nerves of steel. It's going to be Miller. He just seems like a guy just just exudes confidence. Uh, he rolled into that bowl game and looked like a veteran because he, he's been in the system for a number of years. But he's probably going to rely on that run game. So I do expect us uh, uh, to run the ball and run the ball often. Um, and then uh, who else – And well – Let's save this one, Ted, for, for next week. We can go down. We're well over an hour right now. You guys, one, one more thing I really could ask you guys to do. Again, get us to 5,000 tonight. We're probably somewhere around 10 or away. Uh, there's 98 of you right now. I'm assuming 10 of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. If you just hit it right here in the corner, cost you nothing. Get us to 5,000 tonight. Really appreciate everyone being here. Uh, it, it's always a surprise to Matt and I that we do get you guys in here. Uh, we know that you guys have a lot to do on a on a um, on a Friday night. Uh, you being here makes our week. It's my favorite show always because I get to see all of you guys. So make sure that you guys do uh, tune into the show on Monday. On Monday we have the uh, the Trojan Conquest live that I do with Matt and with Mark. Uh, we will be covering uh, again probably the defense and the defensive coaches. We're also you know if you want to see about that twenty five season. Maybe I'll talk to Mark. Mark knows the Big Ten like the back of his hand. We'll be discussing that 2025 schedule and how it compares to the 2024 schedule. Uh, that would be a great idea to start with. Also, you can catch Matt and my work uh, at Trojans Wire. It's in the description of this uh, video. If you guys are watching, please leave comments and, and likes. That absolutely helps to grow the show, grow the channel. And again, like I said, hit the subscribe button. But I think we are done. Thank you so much to Brian Dobbins. Uh, Manjeet, Gary from Dana Point, Adam from Georgia. Uh, then we have Craig from New York, uh, and John from Detroit, and my buddy LV Live for uh, for calling in. You guys, this is your show. It's a call-in show. We do it every week. You guys are the stars of this show. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You guys make this thing happen. Thank you all for being here and supporting us. Uh, remember that we are here Monday night. Uh, sorry, Monday night at eight uh, Pacific and Friday night. 6 p.m. Pacific. Come check us out uh, and, and check out Trojan's Wire. All right, everybody. Fight on. Have a good night.